and he's saying cover up, cover up. They're trying to silence the victims. It could have just been a crowd control issue, but it's it's chaos. Right. Your thoughts? Yeah. Well, you know, there seems to be some type of cover-up, but what that's for, you know, you don't have to take a look at this investigation. You don't have to be an investigative genius to realize this has been an incompetent investigation from day one. When we see what the, what they did when, and how the facts Why? keep what's, changing. Why? What specifically? The facts keep changing. They release information. They come back and they say something totally different. Look at the new timeline they just released. Look at how long it took them to get into the houses of the pilots. We don't run into the houses of the pilots because of some uh, thing that we think. We, they're part of the investigation and we have to go in there. They went, waited several days. Look how long the military took just to be able to say we saw it on, on our military radar and when they asked what they say well we weren't asked specifically right when you see Those with the high authorities right? when you see investigations conducted like this we can appreciate the blessings of uh, american exceptionalism we, we we wasted apparently they wasted four or five days searching uh, the northwest area of malaysia right. according to their critics you know i mean there are some people some pilots who believe that is where the jet is still this day they don't believe the information about the turn although the evidence is really starting to become overwhelming that the plane made the turn and started heading west. Well, the new timeline doesn't match up, and here's why. Because when they said at 107 that made the turn, and then 12 minutes later at 119, they handed him off to Ho Chi Minh uh, Control, mm -hmm. and the guy said, okay, good night, right? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? By that time, they would have been 90 miles off course. Mm -hmm. That tells me that ATC most likely was not controlling them at that time because had they been controlling them long before they got off course by 90 miles, they would have said, hey, why are you diverting your, pa pa your flight path? They would have been right on top of Wait, it. But Rob Marks was on the program last night. He's actually here again tonight um, saying in, in areas like this, radar doesn't always detect it. In, fa in fact, air traffic control might not actually be seeing it go, you know, make the turn and go off course. And it's interesting that they started to do that just as they left Malaysian airspace and went into Vietnam airspace. I mean, it's, right. it does seem somewhat controlled, like sort of in the dark area. Right, but they weren't going towards Vietnam. They were going westbound towards uh, the Strait of Malacca. And that's where they, admit they they lost the airplane, apparently. Now, what kind of excuse are you going to give your, your people when you say that 60 miles or whatever it was, just outside the airport, we lost this airplane in our airspace? Mm -hmm. That was under our control. Could you imagine our government trying to convince the American people 60 miles off LaGuardia, we just can't find this airplane? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't happen. As you listen, to, you know, as a former investigator and pilot, do, do, as you listen to these authorities, do you feel we're dealing with incompetence or we're dealing with a cover up? Because there are some who believe these pilots, one or both of them, did something and that the Malaysian government knows it and doesn't want to say to the world, our guys did something bad to this plane. Right. Eventually, they're going to find out, and hopefully, eventually, they, they will find out. But it, they're covering up something, it appears, because they don't want to give this information out. Facts keep changing about this case. So I believe that there's some competence in this investigation. There's no doubt in my mind. Remember, this is not a government like the United States of America. They don't always have the resources. And while our people always train and prepare for this, they may not. Last and they question. got caught off a guard. What do you now think happened? I believe these people have landed someplace. In my opinion, yes, there are other facts and other theories. But in my opinion, and I believe the facts support this because of what has come forward so far, I believe this airplane's landed, I believe they have hostages, and I believe that um, they have an airplane now. Wow. John, thank you. I could be wrong. Well, Andred, it is one of the deadliest crashes in U.S. history. A Boeing 747 took off from New York City around 9.30 p.m. Minutes later, it exploded midair. The wreckage raining down in a 10-mile-long debris field in the Atlantic Ocean. All 230 people on board were killed. Our next guest, James Kallstrom, was chosen to lead what became the most complex and costly air disaster investigation in U.S. history. He directed 1,000 people, sifting through nearly a million pieces of debris. And four years later, they were able to determine that this crash was caused by a fuel tank explosion. Joining me now, James Kallstrom, former FBI assistant director in charge of the New York Division and co-founder and the chairman of the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation. Jim, good to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Nice being with you, Megan. Your thoughts, uh, knowing what we know tonight on what happened to this airplane. Yeah, it's a very confusing uh, environment we have there. I think after all this time that they haven't found any debris. Uh, I mean, you really have three things. Uh, the pilots wanted to kill themselves, you know, suicide by, by airplane. Mm -hmm. uh, they had ample opportunity to do that. Uh, they want to cause a major stir. Uh, they want to blow up something. They had ample opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, or they want to take the plane for other reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would guess that's my leading uh, thought on the issue right now. Over mechanical failure. Yeah, I, I don't see where the mechanical failure adds up because, uh, you know, if they had mechanical failure and they were, they were trying to mayday or anything, they did none of that. They continued to fly, if you can believe the... If, of course, you've got to understand, can you believe this data? Mm -hmm. you know, yes, some of the that's data a very big question. Some of the data cancels itself out. So the, the whole baseline of the investigation is really on sand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you move out there, and uh, so it's going to be very difficult. But assuming that that is correct, uh, and it did go on for another five and a half or six hours. You know, what is the sense of doing that if you just want to crash the plane or you want to, you know, unless you're totally out of your mind. The mechanical theory is there was some sort of maybe fire on board or smoke in the cockpit, and the reason that there was no communication with air traffic control was the pilot and co-pilot were incapacitated, uh -huh. and the autopilot that they had programmed in to look for a landing spot is what took them well. out over Malaysia. I mean, I guess, the I guess theoretically that could be the case, but I don't think that that has a very high probability of happening. You know, there's so many opportunities on an air, airplane to communicate. There's multi-layers of opportunities, UH ra radios, uh, satellite radios, all kinds of uh, radios that, that operate. And I just don't see that happening. You, do you believe that if this airplane had crashed into the ocean, as opposed to it was landed someplace, that, that we would be seeing debris by now someplace? Well, if there was a catastrophic event, the plane blows up at altitude, either by a bomb or some mechanical electrical failure, you would see hundreds and thousands of pieces of the airplane on the ocean. But now it's been, what, how many days? 13? Going on two weeks now. Going on two weeks. So that, you know, within a week of TWA Flight 800, the uh, debris was landing on the uh, beaches of Cape May in uh, Nantucket Island. So even if they figure out, you know, where that spot was, you know, they're going to have to do some real calculations on the drift, on the tides. Right. And uh, if it's uh, suicide by airline, there's not going to be that much debris. You know, it didn't blow up in midair. Because the entire down. plane would have gone Exactly. In. What about this, this theory that the, that the plane, you know, if it had a mechanical failure and it flew on autopilot, and a lot of people said that's not possible because it flew in such a way that it seemed pretty, pretty well designed. Yeah. In any event, they, if by chance it, it did um, go into the uh, Indian Ocean, w do you believe it would largely be in one piece? If, in other words, if it hadn't crashed in the air and if it had just descended for a lack no, of fuel. No, I don't think it would be in one piece, but it surely wouldn't be in hundreds of thousands of pieces. It would be in big chunks of pieces. And what do you, if you believe the airline or the aircraft was hijacked, either by the pilots or somebody on board the plane, Yes. you heard Lieutenant General uh, McInerney was on yes. earlier saying he believes it's in Pakistan and he believes that there's a source in Boeing who believes that, although Boeing is denying it. Do you think this, this could well, be in Pakistan? Y you know, that could all be true, but you're not going to get the U.S. government to talk about it. If they did talk about it and they worked for me, I'd fire them. I mean, if we know where the plane is, a good chance we could. I don't know that, Megan. I have no inside information. Right. But if they have located the plane, they're not going to be all blabbing about it. They're going to put some operation together, you know, if the people are still alive or whatever, uh, to get that plane out of the arsenal of a, of a future terrorist operation. So I, I just, uh, I'm sure there's a lot going on. I'm sure there's a lot of assets uh, both here and uh, through uh, our allies that a lot of stuff's going on we know a lot and thankfully they're not talking about all of it mm -hmm. but uh, I would not be surprised if at some point we find this plane somewhere Wow uh, 